There you are. Welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia on a Sunday morning. Is this my sermon? <laughs> my house is my church. I'm my own preacher. Uh, I speak my word. And my soul is healed. Anyway, the title of today's talk is, Are You Pumped Up and Ready to Go? Descartes is Dead. Who did it? Zen did it. <laughs> you know, I, I love, I, we watch a lot of British mysteries, uh, and, and they all have the same formula, at least the old ones did. There would be a village, orderly gardens, you know, milkman, a lady on a bicycle, children playing, and somebody walks along and sees a dead body, and there's horror, there's scream, ah! There's chaos in England, there's disorder in order, there's ambiguity. And the detective inspector is called in as the first responder, and he's got to find out who did it, and get rid of it, and restore order to the village, to the empire, you see. So this is the formula. It's still going, it just takes a different form. They add a little spice, take away a little bit. But it's always the... Uh, the, the uh, ambiguity or chaos. You know, these are the same thing. Chaos and ambiguity are the same because when there's chaos, when there's ambiguity, you can't choose who did it. You don't know who did it. Everything is ambiguous. It's Catch-22. Is your movie Catch-22? Watch it. Profound movie. The original one, not the one with Clooney. Catch-22 is an island where yes and no is an always yes. Catch-22 is a revolving door. Remember the first time you saw a revolving door in maybe a hotel? And you go through it, but you don't know how it works, so you go through it and then you go out and you come out where you started. What the fuck? I'm out where I started. <laughs> it's ambiguous. It's a metaphor for ambiguity because in is out and out is in. Yes is no and no is yes. Catch 22. We hate ambiguity because it's not clear and distinct. We can't choose. That was how Descartes settled the chaos of the modern world after the Middle Ages died. What is truth if you don't use the Bible? What is truth if you don't listen to the priest and go to the church? What is truth if you get rid of the church and all of its mythology and all of its biblical stories of creation and all that? What if you get rid of that? What's truth? Well, Descartes said truth is clear and distinct ideas. So you use the scientific method which is basically different from alchemy, which was the science of the Middle Ages, because the alchemy was kind of like poetry. The scientist and his experiment were all involved in each other, so they couldn't be shared. No one else knew what he was doing. <laughs> so scientific truth is shared truth, and it's by the viewpoint of others that validate your viewpoint or your truth, you see. So it's a, an agreed upon truth, and that is clear and distinct, as long as everyone agrees on it. But doubt will always come in, you see, and then that marches the truth down the road. It kicks the clear and distinct idea down the road. It's always a can, a clear and distinct can. You just kick it down the road. But ambiguity means there is no can, a clear and distinct can, you see. Now let me show you a can. Where is my can? God damn it. <laughs> you know, I have so many. <laughs> I have all these artifacts. Oh, here it is. 
This is a can. Right? It's a clear. It's, what is that? It's a can. If I put that on the table over there, and I say, would you go get that can? You'd go get, you would recognize this. It's a can. But if I said, uh, would you go over and get Prince Albert? Now this, this says here, Prince Albert. Remember this? Prince Albert in a can. That was a joke back in, when I was growing up. You know, it's a Prince Albert in a can. Let him out. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so if I said, would you go over and get Prince Albert? I hate this light keeps switching here. You go over and get Prince Albert? You would say, wait, where, 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 where in the hell is Prince Albert? All I see is a bunch of cans. <laughs> well, if I say Prince Albert in a can, which is it? Is it Prince Albert or is it the can? If I say the can, I mean Prince Albert. If I say the Prince Albert, I mean the can. Prince Albert is in a can. That's a metaphor. It's ambiguous. Now, the metaphor holds the ambiguity together, you see. There's Prince Albert, a clear and distinct idea, and there's a can, a clear and distinct idea. We all know what a can is. We all know what Prince Albert is. But when I put them together, when I put them together, then Prince Albert is the can, the can is Prince Albert. That's ambiguous. That's, that's not, you can't choose one or the other. If you choose Prince Albert, you're wrong, it's, it's a can. If you choose the can, you're wrong, it's Prince Albert. It's Prince Albert in a can. It's a different way of thinking. Descartes' way of thinking, which settled the modern mind, the modern world, and cleared the way for science, and clear and distinct ideas in the objective world, he cleared away ambiguity. So a scientist would say, well, what, well, it's a can. A Prince Albert is just an image you added on to it, but it's a can. It's a can. That's a clear and distinct idea. How do I know it's a can? Well, it's, yeah, you taps when you hear it. Uh, you got a top. You can open it, you see. And it holds things. And made out of tin, you see, has these qualities so it's a can. It's, it's, not, it's not a cotton ball. <laughs> you see. It's not a cotton ball. It's a can, you see. But Prince Albert in a can is a cotton ball. Why? Because it's a metaphor. It's, a, it's contained ambiguity. Now, I, I got this, silly me, because my uh, Zen teacher that I've been, uh, I had listened to his talks because he's dead, and read his books, Creating Consciousness, has been my ambiguity teacher, teaching me how to work with ambiguity instead of Descartes. This is my problem on Facebook. I write, amb I, I write in metaphor and every of my readers always want clear and distinct ideas. So on this talk right here, if I say Prince Albert in the can, my readers would say, that's a can. Prince Albert is just something you added, you know, but it's really a can. And so this objective world, which is the can, is clear and distinct idea. It can't be ambiguous. But in the subjective world, in my world, in your world, that subjective, I, see, the world is it. The can, it, is not ambiguous. It's a can, clear and distinct idea. That's, th that's third person grammar. Everything is an it. But in the first person, everything is an I. First person, everything is an I. So in the first-person grammar, the laws of first-person grammar is that everything is ambiguous. It's not fixed by words. It's a metaphor. Zen is a metaphorical, ambiguous teaching. Zen 
and Descartes cannot exist together because Descartes is the objective scientific world everything is a fact and Zen is a subjective world of I am of the first person you see where everything is its own opposite and this is who we are now this is why I use this now objectively what is this well it, <laughs> object with Descartes would say uh, this this is a uh, it, it's it's a, a glass holder you, you put your cup on it that's clear and distinct it's not a can it's not a cat it's a pl it's a cup holder that's objective but subjectively in what it, the the image on it is the old hag right eye nose mouth or or not or and it is also a princess you see there's her little eyelid there's her 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 right cheek and her necklace you see so this is ambiguous it's a hag it is also a princess this is Zen form is emptiness emptiness is form the hag is the princess the princess is the hag you can't choose if you choose the hag the hag is real but it's not complete because it's also the princess so in 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 the in the subjective world and don't get subjective thinking about my feelings that's what we think subjective is feelings not my opinion well that's a subjective you see the real truth is objective says Descartes so Descartes and the rational mind which is the mind we live in you see says well it's, you know oh, that ambiguity is just your opinion it's fantasy imagination you're just imagining all oh, this uh, hag and the princess you see it's what's real is this feel this solid cup holder that's real that's a fact this is just just mind mind stuff you know stay grounded in the fact you see but this Descartes what he did while it's valid he created the groundwork for rational unambiguous thinking was not the whole story. Now I was watching, and I hope you do, Alexander the Great on Netflix. It's a great documentary. Just came out. And the, and the point of this was not about Alexander's conquering the world, but was Alexander a god or not? Did Alexander really think he was a god? The son of Zeus? The son of Pharaoh? You know, of course, to the, the, and this is also a study of the Greek mind and the Persian mind. The rational Greek mind of Aristotle, which became Descartes, and the, the, uh, the, the ambiguity of the uh, Persian mind. Or, um, I don't know what else, but I'm, I, I digress here. Anyway, watch, watch the damn thing. <laughs> It really gets into this ambiguity. Did Alexander believe he was a god or was it ambigu ambiguous, a god-man? That's ambiguous. If you can hold the god-man, you generate power. But if you go one way or the other, you lose power. If you go, Alexander was just a man, a fact, like that just a fact just an object just a fact there's no power in that and they say if well, Alexander a god well that's the same thing as the fact on the others well he's a god he's a god there's no power in that the power is being the god man is he god man is he man god that's ambiguous the ambiguity you see 
is the power if you can hold it. It's like a battery. Take a battery. Is that the battery is a fact. I don't have one here. But the battery contains positive and negative, negative and positive. In the battery, the positive is negative, the negative is positive. The battery contains ambiguity and it generates and you can turn on your lights with it. Nuclear fission, nuclear uh, power plants are like batteries. They contain the ambiguity. If, 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 the, if the container breaks down, it explodes. Because the, the container... Now, now, let's go subjective. You are like a battery. You contain the ambiguities of the whole universe. Like a mic in an amplifier. Now, if you can contain it, you have power. But if you can't, you end up in the ward. Or shooting yourself. Or everybody else. You see. So, the ambiguity must be contained by a mind that does not choose, does not get stuck in Descartes where you have to choose. Is it positive or is it negative? It, the, the, the Descartes mind cannot hold ambiguity. A poet's mind can. An artist's mind can. That's what art is. And art is a form that contains the ambiguity. Poets are like batteries. They contain the ambiguity of the poet. And it goes... So if you really get into the poetry, you have energy awakening in you. It's the energy that the poet put in the bottle. <laughs> you see? So art is energy in a bottle, but if you can't work with ambiguity, it's just a bottle. It's just a movie. But if you can work with the ambiguity of Alexander the Great, is Alexander, this is what Alexander was dealing with. Am I a god? I must be. I conquered all this territory. Or am I a man? Or am I a god man? So that's, we'll stop there, but I'll just end with this. Trump. Trump is ambiguous. And his followers are energized because Trump as a metaphor, as an art form, contains their ambiguity. Is Trump God? Or is he just a con man? Is he, is he this or that? Or that or this? So, the followers of Trump have put Trump in a can, you see. So there's Trump in a can. Is he, can, is he the can or is he, or is he the human, you see. Wah, 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 wah. So that's why the GOP has latched onto and can't get, lo, let, get rid of Trump because he is a nuclear generator of power for his fault, not for the uh, not for the rest of us, because we look at it from objective. He's a con man, but from inside the can, from inside the can, oh, he's a god. He's Jesus. Is Alexander a god or is he a man? What does Alexander think? What do you think? Who are you? Are you God? Oh, you're going to end up in the ward. Are you just man? Or are you going to end up depressed? And in dementia, I missed my life. I don't know what happened. Nothing worked out. <laughs> if you can contain the ambiguity that you were that you were man and you were God, or God and man, man and God, you're working with Zen. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. Man is God. God is man. Contain the ambiguity. Don't, you can't choose. Suspend choice. When you go to the movie, you suspend choice. You don't sit there in the movie and say, oh, this is fucked up. I'm leaving. Well, if you do, you leave. You made a choice. It's no good. So we do it all the time. You go to a movie, you suspend Descartes. 
You suspend the objective viewpoint and you go into the subjective and you inhabit the movie as the movie. When you watch Alexander the Great and you really get into it, you feel like you are Alexander the Great. You experience his dilemma. You experience his questioning. You experience his divinity. You experience his triumph and his tragedy, his end, you see, all of it. Of course, the movie leaves it open. But anyway, that's the end of my Sunday sermon. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>